These fabricated clamp racks really fill out this clamp storage unit very well. It holds a lot of clamps. These weren't very difficult to make. So let's go up to the shop and see how I made these. Today's video is brought to you by Skillshare, an online learning community. This is just material that I happen to have on hand. It's eighth inch by inch and a half. So is it th three millimeters by 38 millimeters, so somewhere in that range. It only needs to be strong enough to hold the clamps, and this is plenty strong enough. My cut length is 12 inches, but that fits my rack. If you're doing something similar, the key thing is that it fits the space you need it to fit in, not that it fits my space. I want to leave a little tab on the end of these so the clamps can't accidentally slide off. I'm just going to do that by cutting a little wedge out of the top section, leaving the tab behind. Pretty easy to do on the porta band, although it doesn't pass through well. But if I flip it, there's just enough space to sneak that little wedge by the back of the bandsaw. And to make sure that the top where I cut the wedge out is actually the level surface for the clamps to hang on, I'm just going to cut a little wedge out of the back of it and that makes it 90 degrees to the, the top surface and the slope will be on the bottom surface then. In my mind, I saw cutting a little notch out of the back plate as the best way to assemble and weld this. So I'm laying it out for the notch. I want to make sure that it's wide enough that the clamp will fit where I want it to. In hindsight, this notch really doesn't serve any purpose, and I think it's better to just weld it right to the, the back plate. And that's what I did with the other racks that I made. So something else you can nibble out on a portable bandsaw the way I've got this one set up and then just clean it up with a file. I always try to deburr the drill holes just to make sure there's no sharp snaggy spots on the edges. This is just old rusty material that's been laying around for a while so I'm going to go ahead and clean the rust off as best I can on a wire wheel. I'm not too worried about it in our dry climate this is never going to be a problem. 
but I'll get it as clean as I can. That also helps with the welding. clamped up, make sure it all fits. Double check it again with the clamp. Just using some spacers to be able to hold it all parallel here. Make sure it all lines up. And tack weld it together and run a bead down the side. I'm not going to show much welding here, it's all about the same. Overnight it got a lot colder and we got a little bit of snow, so we're going to move into the house now. Well, it was getting cold yesterday when I finished assembling these brackets for the clamps. So I decided to go ahead and do the waxing inside. I've just been heating these up on the little wood stove down here in the basement wood shop. Just needs to be hot enough to melt the wax, and I think we're probably there. Today I'm using Minwax just because that's what I happen to have down here. A lot of people ask, what are the alternatives to Johnson Paste Wax? I suspect this is a pretty good alternative, as is the forge finish from Zach's Wax. Yep, that's hot enough to melt it. With the wax on these, I'm going to go ahead and give them some time to cool. And that's a great opportunity to thank the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes to choose from. Personally, I've been a Skillshare member for years. I can't even remember when I first signed up. And I've learned quite a bit. A lot of what I've taken are classes on video production for YouTube. Matter of fact, as winter comes on and it gets colder outside, I'll probably spend more time inside in the longer nights. And I'm going to get back to some of those classes. One that I started but haven't finished is a YouTube creator class with Sorella Moore. And I'm looking forward to finishing that. The next thing I want you to look at is gathering credibility for the USPs that you've decided for yourself. Having credibility behind you will help you so much on the online world, and it doesn't have to come from a piece of paper that you've graduated from somewhere. As a matter of fact, I will probably go back and start at the beginning again and do the whole class. That's one of the advantages of Skillshare. You don't have to take it in a specific order. You don't have to finish it in a specific timeline. As long as you're still a Skillshare member, you can go back and take the same class over and over again if you want, review certain parts of the class, take other similar classes. It doesn't cost you any extra. But Skillshare has so much more to help you with your creative interest. There are classes on website design, marketing, how to do Instagram or set up an Etsy shop, selling online, selling at craft shows, product photography if you are selling online. Lots of things that can really help you if you're trying to turn your blacksmithing hobby into a small blacksmithing business, either full-time or just for some part-time income. The first 500 people to click the link can get a one-month free trial of Skillshare. 
As soon as these are cool enough to touch, we'll get back to putting these in the rolling clamp rack, get most of the other clamps hung up, and then see what little spaces I can shoehorn a few more clamps into. These wooden clamps I'm putting in at an angle, that allows more room for the screw handles and I'm actually able to get them all in here. Otherwise there wasn't quite room, especially for the bigger ones. And for all of these I put one screw in and then I double check it, make sure it all lines up the way I want it to. And each of these brackets has four screws. Same procedure for the longer bar clamps on the other side of the rack. I'm really impressed how many clamps I've been able to shoehorn into here. And I still have some room if I want to buy more of the same size clamps. Most of these I've got room for a couple of extras. Although at the moment I don't think I'm in desperate need of more clamps. This is really a pretty simple, straightforward project. Just think about what each style of clamp needs and where it's going to fit in the final piece. And just go ahead and get it all put together and assembled. And if necessary, these can be rearranged later. They leave screw holes behind, but it won't hurt anything for a shop project. These fabricated clamp racks really fill out this clamp storage unit very well. It holds a lot of clamps. These weren't very difficult to make. I had dabbled a little bit with some forge designs, but they were a little bit more complicated and I don't think they were any better. They were just more work to make. These are a much better design. I think they've got a lot more mounting surface. If you just wanted to make forged ones for an exercise, that would certainly be possible. But for my purposes, I'm glad I went with the fabricated racks. Now there's still a little bit more to do to this. I need a place to put things like C-clamps. I think I'm going to build a box and put it on the bottom floor of this. And that way I can take all the C-clamps out if I need them. Don't use them very often, so I don't want to give up hanging clamp space just for C-clamps. And with a little ingenuity, I think I can still get a few more clamps in on this side, fill in some of these spots. With some of the oddball clamps, they only have one or two of, so I think things like this can kind of 
fit in these little spaces, maybe down here or something. I'll just have to think about that. I don't think we need to make a video. If you watch enough of my videos in the future, I'm sure you'll see this, and as I reach for these clamps, you'll be able to tell what I did with them. In the meantime, I hope you have time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, stay safe, wear your safety glasses. We'll see you for the next video.